hello again everyone. Here's another ride that's part of our series that are loosely based around the Tarka Trail in North Devon. And we're incorporating part of National Cycle Route 27. So the Tarka Trail, for those of you that uh, d have never encountered it, is like a figure of eight set of rides around North Devon. We've already done a few of them, whether around the middle, which is probably the nicest, and then right down the south, uh, and then uh, there's a section in the north, which is really the sort of the, the coastline. Today we're going to repeat some around the coastline, but instead we're going to follow along the north coast there. But we're not going to do the whole of the north coast. You can see it here. This is North Devon. And you can see Exmoor is on our right. We're going to start in the middle of the countryside, head up to Ilfracombe, have a look around, and then avoid Lee Bay because it's a huge amount of up and down. And we wanted to restrict ourselves to below 2,000 feet of climb into Woolacombe, Georgian, Braunton. So here's the top. So you can see where we start, the bottom right. We head up towards Ilfracombe, and we had a little wander around there, and then avoiding Lee Bay. And then again at the south, we just cut inland a little bit and then start heading up around Ashford. So we only do a very part, small part of it. And this is the worst, the most dangerous bit of the journey. We have to cross the A361, which at certain times of the year can be quite busy. So simple little route, really. Nice little circle. So I'll show you here. We're heading north. We get up to Ilfracombe, have a bit of a wander around. Round. There's Lee Bay. You can see that big Y of trees there but we head to Ilf, uh, Woolacombe, well on the outside of Woolacombe, drop down through the town along Woolacombe Bay, then around into Braunton which is the start of the main part of the Tarka Trail, you can see how straight that is and then at Ashford we head back off and we really just continue around in the circle back through the fields to our starting point. So a simple route, just under 30 miles uh, quite a bit of climbing but not too bad so here we are starting I apologize for the bouncing around but that's just uh, the way it is when you record at this pace so you can see we're in the middle of nowhere of the fields and we're turning out onto the main road and heading up towards Ilfracombe and the roads are relatively quiet you know there are cars around here but they're in pretty good condition and that's the purpose of these videos really to indicate what's whether something is manageable or not so we're heading down there's a big Tesco supermarket on our left we just head into the edge of town and then you, when you arrive at, at Ilfracombe you're right at the top of the hill and you have to descend down so just be a little careful because it can get quite fast as you hit the town and then you drop down over this section here we took a few photos and then drop down into the coast and then this is all pedestrianised around here, so you should really get off your bike. It was freezing cold day, so we just went for a little bit of a look around the seafront, get to know the architecture, and then we're back. So we're heading south now, and we have to go through the edge of the town, but it's not that hard but there's a few steep climbs because we just got to get up that cliff that we descended earlier on. So we're heading towards an industrial park that's on the outside. So we go through the edge of this housing development. And that's where we do our climbing. We decided to do most of our climbing in tight back streets rather than out in the main thing. Then we head up this quite an old looking road really with allotments and gardens on the left which are now mostly being converted into parking and some quite nice houses on the right. Uh, we head up the top of the hill and then we're just going to cut through to like a little industrial estate and we head left here just to the left of it and we're now on National Cycle Route 27. Now we do have another video of this ride. This one is pretty well gravelled over and it goes all the way down and incorporates part of the Tarka Trail on it but uh, it's really once you're at the top it's a long descent so there's some allotments and then we get towards some reservoirs you can just about make out on our right it's a very very easy descent this part but it is a bit gravelly and there's a lot of dog walkers around so do be careful of those that are also sharing that path with you through the tunnel which is dark and a bit wet so ring your bell before you go in and 
then we come out the other side and it's typical of this Exmoor um, scrub that's that's all covered in moss and everything else so it's very pleasant it's an old railway track and occasionally you see railway accoutrements and roads railside furniture but uh, fairly level now at this point now that we've reached the bottom of the main part and we're going to go through a set of gates and get onto a much more formal path so past a little railway hut nice descent under the bridge and just watch out for this it's always in the shade we've done it several times and it's always in the shade and the surface is always a bit wet so it can get a bit slippery but we hit this and then we've got some say some gates to go around the outside of and now we're on a main fairly isolated cycle path you don't get a lot of pedestrians on it we're cutting across a few other things but this is NCR 27 and it follows almost straight south out of Ilfra Coombe and then we turn right at this point and we're going to go right the way round and then we're going to get, take Morto Station Road which is almost back on yourself a relatively quiet road um, mostly rural community vehicles so they're four wheel drive but not your Chelsea tractors they're mostly pickups and twin cabs so we're heading out on this bit of road the few bits of places where there's the, the walls or the fence on the side has fallen down into the road so you get the odd brick so watch out for that and we get into the town of Morthoe which is just above Woolacombe and we stop there to have a really nice look around it's a very pretty edge of the town so we descend down to the cliff tops and then we had a little look out across the bay there is a bit of a beach down there but didn't see a lot of people utilizing that they like to seem to sit around on the path and take their dogs for a walk so we just stopped here had a cup of tea and a piece of flapjack because you have to don't you really and took a few pictures and then off we go now we're just going to descend into Woolacombe and then out to Woolacombe Bay and that's where you can find a set of toilets road service is good so we just turn around here those are the toilets and then we leave and we move on and this one is fairly steep but not insurmountable uh, feels a bit like going through Heathland and golf courses but we're now going to cut round through what's essentially a huge long car park at the top of the hill with sand dunes and sand down below and it's it's not a bad bit of ride but it's the surface is quite grumbly and it's it's better at this point here where we've got all these cars parked and there's a few motorhomes that occasionally you'll get to and then we just pop out the far end and it's a bit more grumbly here but it's not a bad surface but it's got some big potholes in it you just need to watch out for but it's you can see the impact that the wind has had all the trees are leaning over but as we come out of the end of it it becomes much more rutted and we had to push up this bit of hill here so uh, you know it's it's stones and and shingle and things we'll get back on again and carry on but in the wet that would be quite tricky because it'd be very slippery and then we're going down a very narrow track we can't believe that this is a proper cycle track that was recommended by Kamut so as we send up the next bit of hill um, we now find that it's much more of a farm track and then we hit the main road again banked up on each side the views aren't quite so brilliant but we're heading inland now towards Georgium and there was some a lot of building work going on on some of the roads and so they were all said that they were closed off but we carried on because you can normally get round when it's closed off to cars and they don't always necessarily indicate which roads are closed off so we're just heading up this hill and we're now working our way gradually to Braunton so we're heading slightly inland and south at the same time so a bit of southeast and this is where the road is closed but we can get round and 
This is the town of Georgium, or the village of Georgium. Nice little quiet town. A couple of churches, several pubs, and we just turn left here, and we take Buckland Road east, and then south on Northfield Road. And we're really just now going to drop down into Braunton. This is nice and rural, although it was cold, it was also beautifully sunny. So you can see the roads have quite often got all sorts of stuff growing in the middle of them because they're mostly impacted by tractors throwing mud around. Not ideal for cars, but great for cycling. Another bit of a climb here, stop have a quick drink and now we can whiz our way along onto the edge of Braunton. And at times you can see the coastline again and the estuary. But we head down now and you can see the town of Braunton and sometimes in the distance you can even see Barnstaple. Head down, this is the town of Braunton, or the edge of it, outer edge. Uh, we have to cut through a bit of a cycle track, uh, a bit of a housing estate, and now we get onto the Tarka Trail. So this is the first part of the Tarka Trail. It takes you down right down to the coast. Just have to cut through the edge of the town here, but now we're on it. And, oh no, maybe not quite on it. Here we are. And the aim is now that we go through here and this is the formal start of that section of the Tarka Trail so we're adjacent to the estuary and it's a good place to stop have another cup of tea lots of people here if you're into bird watching this is a fantastic place really really good follow through past the military base that's on your right Just. Be careful, there's a lot of other people using the, the path at the time for walking and also for cycling and a lot of dogs and quite often there's a dog on one side, a, the walker on the other and a lead stretching across. It's a military base so I wouldn't recommend stopping and taking photographs of what's going on through the fence but it's all very peaceful. We get up to the end here and we cut around the edge, rejoin and now it's just estuary. A lot of fields on our left and not very far up here we're actually, before we even really get Woolacombe, uh, um, Barnstable in our sights, we're going to turn off. But it's very pretty and it's a very peaceful place to be. Definitely recommend this ride, the one that goes around the estuary from Braunton all the way down to Biddeford via Barnstable. That's a great ride, easy for families as well. So just up here we're now going to shoot off left so we get past a couple of slower cyclists. Uh, the railway embankment, or the road embankment on our left. Estuary on the right. And we're going to head towards Ashford, so just here we turn left and this is where we've got to cross the A361 do be careful there's technically a cycle path and we've managed that you can see here but it is a very very busy road and there's not great visibility and the, that's for the cars they can't really see you so we're heading towards the village of Ashford and we're going to get to Ashford fairly soon and one of the things you'll notice about this is it's a mixture of hills and rapid descents. So you do need to have your wits about you, make sure you choose the right gear. But the road surfaces are very good. So we're now heading up Strand Lane into Ashford and the bit that we're looking out for is the pointy church. So at the moment you see the church rising up then we know we've got to turn right. So past this house that was being re-roofed this is unbelievably steep here. 
and you get here and you can see the church ahead of us and we're just going to turn right by that bench and again really really steep but you will get through it it was actually a bit of a killer uh, we had to stop take a breath stopped in this driveway had a quick drink and then carry on and that's really it we now carry on these quiet roads until we eventually get to the wind turbines at the far end just following the sides follow the commute route that you've got plotted in so that was a right turn back there but there are very few turns and the road is fairly straight heading north very slightly east again so you will have the sun behind you on the way home I should think in the summer you will get incredibly hot look at the surface of the road here it's mostly mud it is tarmac underneath but it's mostly mud from all the agricultural work that's taking place and we've had a lot of water and rain but we've turned left again and stay right the other thing was that they'd recently cut the hedges before the birds started nesting so they cut the hedges early and you will often find that you get thorns and various other things in the road so I would recommend if you're going to do this journey you can be in the middle of nowhere so do carry a spare inner tube or two as well as your puncture repair kit I don't think you need to go as far as carrying a spare tire as some people will but we carry on up here and the thing to watch out for is eventually you will start to see some wind turbines appear on the horizon but they're a long way along uh, it's not the prettiest bit of route this bit it's mostly hedgerows and fields but it's certainly very very peaceful and you pass through a few little hamlets there are places to stop here occasional pub occasional cafe but not a lot so it is important if you think you might need toilets to rely on those ones that you can find in Woolacombe this was a bit of a steep hill but partly because we were tired because of all the previous hills that we'd had and been a bit of a busy time but now technically the road is unrestricted restricted so just watch out for the fast vehicles but again you can see it's not exactly a lot of traffic and your sign that you're home is a group of wind turbines on the hill which I don't think I've ever seen all of them going round at the same time there's always one that seems to be out of commission There we go, you can see one on the right as we work our way up. And that is our indicator that we're just about back to the car. It's a long climb. Not particularly steep, but you've still got to get there. So here we are, just finishing off a little bit more and we are done. So check us out on the Kamut page that we've got here, Tarka North, that's the north loop that we've got here, avoiding Lee Bay. And uh, you'll see on the right hand side, download GPX file, that's worth doing. So you can pick up a GPX file and that will enable you to just pop it into your cycle computer or onto your phone and it will guide you around. 500 meters of climb, that's quite an amount. Okay, we'll see you again on the next ride. Bye.